life on planet Earth exists due to the fine balance of several Earth system processes in our atmosphere. Hydrosphere, Geosphere, Cryosphere and Biosphere. The air that we breathe, the water that we drink and the food we eat depend on these Earth system processes. It includes the monsoons that form the lifeline of our agriculture and drive our economy. The interplay of these earth system processes also results in disasters such as earthquakes, cyclones and tsunamis that determine the safety of our habitats. For instance, the Indian Ocean Tsunami of December 26, 2004 alone took the lives of about 230,000 people spanning 14 countries in the Indian Ocean, including 10,749 in India. Climate change is disrupting the delicate balance of Earth system processes, warming oceans, melting ice caps and rising sea levels. Humanity's biggest challenge today is observing, understanding and predicting the Earth system processes. India has been working at the forefront of Earth system science and services through its dedicated institutions, state-of-the-art infrastructure and scientific human capital. Earth science is a subset of planetary science. It encompasses all natural science disciplines that are concerned with our beloved planet. Earth scientists typically employ tools based on geology, chronology, physics, chemistry, geography, biology and mathematics to develop a quantitative understanding of how the Earth functions. They use the knowledge to provide solutions to sustain life on our planet. This quest for understanding the universe was predominant in Indian civilization, even in the Rakhi Gadi era, which dates back to about 6,000 years ago. Mining and meteorology were in use. India has a rich history. Artha Shastra talks of mining and it brilliantly captures the essence of mining legislation. Probably Arthashastra is the first known piece of literature which states that the right over mineral found in any country vests with the state. Ancient sailors not only defended the maritime domain with the navy but they also carried out commercial explorations in distant oceans. हमारे पूर्वज समंदर पर अपना वर्चस्व इसलिए कायम कर पाए क्योंकि उन्हें हवा की दिशा के बारे में अंतरिक्ष विज्ञान के बारे में बहुत अच्छी जानकारी थी। किस रीति में हवा की दिशा क्या होगी? कैसे हवा की दिशा के साथ आगे बढ़कर हम पड़ाव पर पहुंच सकते हैं इसका ज्ञान हमारे पूर्वजों की बहुत बड़ी ताकत In India the earliest observatories were set up between the 18th and 19th centuries to study seismographic geological and atmospheric processes As India became independent New windows of opportunity opened up for the common people. Technology started becoming increasingly important in the open market and free societies. This growth led to the establishment of new scientific institutions in the domains of space, atomic energy, science and technology, biotechnology, ocean development and earth sciences amongst others to fulfill the aspirations of modern India. The Department of Ocean Development has started in the year 1980s, in the early 80s, mainly look at it, the ocean resources and its associated services. 
I think over the period it has come long way. Then it has uh, started with the oceanographic observation as well as services. And also India has uh, launched Antarctic expedition in 1983. And later on, uh, whereas the atmospheric component like weather and climate and uh, seismology, earthquake related, all these things is done by the Department of uh, Science and Technology. But later on in the early 2000, the government decided, I think this is a working ocean and atmosphere. They are both are symbiotic relation. So the government thought, thought that it has to be merged together and they formed the Ministry of Earth Sciences around in 2006. In July 2006, the Government of India upgraded the Department of Ocean Development to the Ministry of Earth Sciences or MOES. It also approved setting up a body called the Earth Commission under the Ministry. Soon the MOES administration brought several leading institutes, laboratories and other prime organizations under its purview. Today the Ministry is providing valued services through its various institutions. On January 26, 2001, when the entire country was celebrating Republic Day in India, a tremendous magnitude 7.9 earthquake unexpectedly rocked the Bhud city in Gujarat. According to reports, there were approximately 18,600 fatalities, over 167,000 injuries and huge economic losses because of the earthquake. The research and development around such natural hazards and earth processes in seismology fall under the subset called solid earth and are carried out by institutions like the National Center for Seismology or NCS, the Borehole Geophysics Research Laboratory or BGRL and the National Center for Earth Science Studies or NCESS. Earthquakes are unpredictable, so finding ways to limit losses is crucial. MOES strives to create better services, from the mapping of micro-seismical zone to providing earthquake-resilient construction advisories. However, the continuous observation and dissemination of earthquake events are one of the prime objectives of NCS. India as a subcontinent is regarded as a hot spot of the generating the different kinds of the earthquake. India witnessed the massive earthquakes of magnitude 8.7 occurred in the 1897 in Ceylon. Since then, the first permanent seismological observatory was set up uh, in 1898 in Alipur, Kolkata to monitor the earthquakes occurring in the different parts of the India. And if you see the history in 1898 to 2013, the India has established a total of 84 digital three-component seismograph stations, permanent seismograph stations in the different part of the country. And if you see the, the growth of the densification of the seismological network till today, we added the 68 more stations since 2014 till today to make it 152 seismological stations to monitor the earthquakes around the clock. Monitoring of earthquake activities is running 24-7 at the NCS located in New Delhi powered by a dense network of seismographic observatories connected with VSAT giving real-time monitoring of earthquakes. So when the uh, signal to noise ratio exceeds some threshold uh, like that for five stations then the event will be declared. So this information immediately will be goes to the uh, our uh, uh, mobile app and then our website also. The center is also involved in seismic hazard assessment and earthquake research using the earthquake catalog and waveform data, which include detailed mapping of all significant earthquakes and seismic microzonation of important cities. NCS also monitors earthquake swarms and aftershocks by deploying temporary observatories close to the affected region. 
One such earthquake swarm began to occur in Koina area of Maharashtra after the creation of the Shivaji Sagar Lake in 1962. Uh, the earthquakes in this region started soon after the impoundment of the Koina Dam in 1962. Within a few years, the seismic activity in this region was enhanced, and in 1967, we had the largest reservoir-triggered earthquake in the world, magnitude 6.2. The BGRL at Karad was established to address such complex seismological problems of societal importance through scientific drilling studies. BGRL relies on direct observations of the physical and mechanical properties of rocks near the source zone of earthquakes. Laboratory measurements complement the studies on deep rock samples recovered by drilling. A state of the art core repository facilitates multidisciplinary studies. Every year, clouds carry the message of life across the Indian subcontinent as the monsoon approaches the beautiful hills of the Western Ghats. The NCESS has established 3 cloud physics observatories in the southern part of the region. 1820 meters above sea level here in manar it is the highest elevated observatory in the tropical region the facility continuously monitors clouds atmospheric profiles lightning and rainfall the facility is improving knowledge about convective propagation and mountain weather too to unravel such mysteries surrounding the solid earth and its processes for the sustainable development of natural resources conservation of the environment and the management of natural hazards ncess is consistently paving the path for the future of india so the main research activities of organization currently is primarily on solid earth geosciences so you will look at the solid uh, part of the earth surface and interior and try to understand its origin and evolution through time so our research activities span not only to the solid part also to the hydrosphere to the atmosphere as well as parts of the coastal ocean agriculture in india is largely dependent on the weather and climate More than 70 crore people in India rely on agriculture and allied businesses even though it may not be a major part of the GDP. Institutes like Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology or IITM and National Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting or NCMRWF carry out atmospheric research through numerical modeling and observations and provide weather products and inputs to India Meteorological Department or IMD which is the National Operational Weather Forecaster Climate change causes extreme weather conditions like floods and droughts which affect our lives livelihoods and food security Today Indian scientists are working hard to address these issues through modern technology. Scientists from IITM Pune carried out experiments for cloud seeding. Cloud seeding is an artificial weather enhancement technique used to stimulate rainfall. IITM has been rendering research and development efforts in weather and climate over the last 60 years. that have helped improve monsoon forecasts on different space and time scales including high precision prediction of tropical cyclones we are having a variety of observational programs as well as modeling programs to address many of the science question we have a center for climate change research uh, which has developed the first earth system model from india and has contributed to the Uh, IPCC sixth assessment report this is the first time a very important contribution has come from IITM this is a landmark work efforts are being made to develop make in india models to provide reliable forecasts even finer than block level ones 
IITM is also nurturing the next generation of weather and climate scientists through capacity building and human resource development to further improve India's weather prediction capacity. The extraordinary ability in the atmospheric sciences and weather forecasting comes from daily observations and studying the atmosphere. The NCM RWF in NOIDA assimilates these observational data into various computerized numerical forecast models. These models are equations and new and past weather data on dedicated supercomputers to generate forecasts. NCM RWF has emerged as the leading center for atmospheric data assimilation and is catering to the operational forecasting needs of all MOES institutes. So this center was established uh, in 1989 and this was the first time that we started doing global modeling. And because of this uh, global model, we are able to predict 10 days in advance now. Meteorological data from various sources are used by IMD and turned into processed weather products to be forwarded round the clock on a near real-time basis. Websites and apps, print media, television news and dedicated display boards bring regular weather reports and warnings of extreme weather events to national and international users. So if you look at uh, the cyclone Ampan, which is a super cyclone and crossed West Bengal and then Bangladesh coast over Sundarban with a wind speed of about 160 to 170 km per hour, gusting to 185 km per hour, there was death of uh, less than 100. If I go to the past and see the similar cyclones, in 1970, the Bhola cyclone, which crossed Bangladesh coast near Bhola Island, caused the death of 300,000 people and which was not a super cyclone but was only a very severe cyclone storm. So therefore, we have been able to minimize the loss of lives from 300,000 to about less than 100 over a period of 1970 to 2020, that is 50 years. As the state-of-the-art warning system accurately predicts geological incidents well in advance and common Indians are more connected now, due to the mass digital literacy and outreach of the internet, governments and the public get more time to respond and take preventive measures to reduce fatalities and loss of property. For its superior capacity and quality of its services and products, the department has been recognized internationally as a regional telecommunication hub connected with a worldwide network for sharing important weather data through various platforms, including some indigenous mobile applications for better outreach. The department is also involved in various other activities like the continuous air quality monitoring in our big cities and operational integrated flood warning systems for the cities of Mumbai and Chennai. Based on a strong foundation of scientific research and development, these extraordinary services by MOES are making our everyday lives safer and better. As India's economy grows, developing indigenous technologies to contribute to the global blue economy becomes imperative. A range of institutions like the Indian National Centre for Ocean Information Services or INCOIS, the Centre for Marine Living Resources and Ecology or CMLRE, the National Centre for Coastal Research or NCCR, and the National Institute of Ocean Technology or NIOT are working in the hydrosphere and ocean development sector, providing valuable services for the ocean and coastal waste, hydrology and more. Institutions are also dedicatedly working to sustainably explore and harness marine living and non-living resources. The oceans play a significant role in regulating our climate and are a reliable source of food, petroleum, natural gas, minerals and renewable energy.
The ocean also produces even 70% of the oxygen that humans breathe. INCOIS is the National Marine Forecasting Center providing ocean data, information and advisory services and issuing warning services for the coastal population and seafarers. Operational short-term ocean state forecasts of waves, currents, sea surface temperature and more are being provided daily. The warnings on tsunamis, high waves, swell surges and storm surges are also being issued to the fishers and coastal residents. The Indian Navy and Coast Guard, disaster management authorities, workers in ports and harbours, maritime and pollution control boards, industries such as shipping, oil and natural gas, tourism departments, ocean scientists and non-governmental organisations. Tsunami Early Warning System is a really uh, kind of a, you know, proud moment for me and for all of us. This I would say is a truly indigenous kind of Indian initiative. So it, it is done totally by you know, Indian scientists, Indian institutions who actually work together to deliver a project that can be called totally indigenous. As the search and rescue aid tool or SARAT assists rescues and lifeguards at sea, simultaneously the online oil spill advisory forecasts the predicted trajectory of an oil spill. The centre also provides end-to-end -end consultancy solutions through various projects for ONGC, JNPT, the Indian Navy, the Maritime Board and others. The ocean around the Indian coastline is teeming with fish and other aquatic life. Indian fishermen go to great lengths in the sea and consistently work hard. However, earlier fishing in the sea largely depended on luck until something unique began happening. Today, the potential fishing zone advisory reaches approximately 7 lakh fishermen across the country daily to assist them in finding the areas of fish aggregation in the ocean. This advisory improves the economics of the fishing operation by saving fuel and helps to reduce our country's carbon footprint. Multiple dissemination modes such as mobile apps, smart map and text messages, low-cost satellite-based telecommunication devices are also being developed and popularized to keep the fishermen connected while they are far from the reach of the mobile network. Not only fishermen, but Indian scientists also set out to sea and cast their nets up to 1500 meters deep in search of hidden living treasures. The fishery oceanographic research vessel Sagar Sampada is being utilized to identify the best approach for managing the marine living resources in the Indian exclusive economic zone. CMLRE has been actively organizing, coordinating and promoting programs of national and regional importance in areas related to the marine living resources of the country. The understanding of the marine environment is very very important. Anything you know management, how the life is you know surviving over there or how the life is moving or how the life is evolving or you know, changing its diversity and its stocks over the years for all the things understanding of that you know, habitat that marine environment is very very important and that is the one of the major factor that you know similar is being addressing over the years both arabian sea and bay bengal a comprehensive database containing about 120000 records of more than 12000 marine species has been generated with complete details of geographical location, depth of occurrence and taxonomic classification. The entire database is accessible through the Ocean Biodiversity Information System portal. The referral center holds approximately 3,200 voucher specimens collected from the Indian Exclusive Economic Zone and areas beyond national jurisdiction which include 24 species and 67 new geographical records of deep-sea marine organisms. 
numerous taxonomic catalogues on marine organisms including those of rare and new species from the Indian Ocean region have been published for scientific outreach. Thus, the scientific information generated from the Marine Living Resource Program of CNLRE benefits in attaining the goals projected under Sustainable Development Goal 14 or SDG 14. Using Indian satellite images and field measurements, NCCR examined the rate of shoreline change along the 7,516 km long coastline of India. A comprehensive web-based coastal change information system has been developed to assist coastal managers in developing and managing coast-related processes. The health of the seas around India is being monitored seasonally at 50 locations on various technical parameters and the data outputs are shared with Niti Aayog, the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation and Center and State Pollution Control Boards for updating the SDG 14 index and decision making. The way forward in the future we are going to establish a state of art coastal research facility at Visakhapatnam which has just commenced its construction and likely to be completed by 2024. At the same time, to have a research in the field level, the field research facility has been set up at Mandapam in Tamil Nadu, where you can do direct research in the sea and then that information can be transferred to the livelihood of the pressure man. Coral reef health in the Gulf of Mannar, which is a matter of concern in the era of global warming and climate change, is also being monitored extensively by scientists from NCCR since 2018 to assess the total live and dead coral coverage, community structure of reef building corals, external influences and threat faced by coral ecosystem. NIOT is developing reliable indigenous technologies to solve various engineering problems associated with harvesting non-living and living resources in the ocean in an environmentally sustainable manner. NIOT's data boys provide vital inputs to the Indian Meteorological Department in COIS and National Disaster Management Authority for promulgating warnings to the countrymen on cyclones and tsunamis. The institute has also developed a low temperature thermal desalination technology to ensure the clean drinking water supply to the remote islands of Lakshadweep provides safe drinking water which has brought down the prevalence of waterborne diseases in the islands. Uh, we call oceans inner space. Conquering inner space is more difficult than conquering outer space because here the medium is dynamic. More importantly, electromagnetic waves don't penetrate into ocean. You can control Mars rover sitting from here with some delay, but you cannot see what is below 25 meters of the ocean. So it is very difficult to explore the oceans. So we need to understand the uh, water column and seabed for that we need sustained explorations for that we need vehicles so so far we have been concentrating on developing unmanned vehicles for fattening the ocean depths as the nation focuses on renewable energy resources niot's research contributes to harnessing energy from the ocean we had a very unique project in kerala providing offshore breaker at Pundra. Pundra is known to be one of the severest area where the sea is very rough. And Kerala took that area for our uh, pilot project for protecting that uh, coastal area, exclusively used for the fishermen. We have contacted NIOT Chennai, and uh, with their active support, guidance survey, we have partially completed about 700 meters of offshore breaker at Pundra area. The, right from the beginning, from the initiation, from modeling and also for the finalization of the DPR, NIOT is closely associated with the project and we have completed this uh, 700 meter with their active supervision and support. 
NIOT has developed and demonstrated environment-friendly coastal protection measures for beach restoration using innovative methods. Cryospheric studies are becoming increasingly relevant today in the wake of climate change, depletion and dynamics of the glaciers as an after-effect of global warming and the rise of the sea level. The scientists from National Center for Polar and Ocean Research or NCPOR visit the cryospheric regions, the Arctic, Antarctic and the Himalayas. The center has established a high-altitude research station in Himalayas known as Himanj at an altitude of 4,080 meters. This facility has been established to study the dynamic and rate of change in glaciers and to understand the impact of hydrology and climate on the Chandra Basin. The Indian Antarctic program is a very well-developed program which has come of age in so many years, in the past so many years. India has built uh, a number of stations in Antarctica. The first station built in Antarctica in 1983 was Dakshin Gangotri station. Next station, Maitri, was built in 1987. Bharati station that was built in 2012 about 3,000 kilometers from the existing station Maitri. Regular expeditions are sent to Antarctica every year. MOES initiated the Indian Southern Ocean Research Program to pursue multi-institutional research activities. NCPOR also conducts geoscientific surveys to map the EEZ of India and explore the ocean's non-living resources in the Indian Ocean. All these are now possible by the efforts of the MOES through cutting-edge R&D. Numerical modeling of Earth system science processes, observations, modern ICT techniques and more. These services for humanity are being driven by understanding the Earth science related processes depending on what India has earmarked on in this century. India is not only ensuring the country's sustainable development through the coastal ocean mission, but the nation is also focusing on the deep ocean mission to strengthen its blue economy. Namaskar. Embracing the vision of Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji for a new India, we at the Ministry of Earth Sciences are committed to the idea of one earth, one family, one future. Our work in unraveling Earth's complex system not only aids in protecting our people's lives and livelihoods, but also epitomizes Seva, our service to the nation. Our determined scientists and collaborators across domains such as meteorology, climate research, geosciences and oceanography are vital in pushing the frontiers of science and technology. Together, we aim to achieve the PM's vision of a successful blue economy. We remain committed to fostering a sustainable planet and making our services more accessible and beneficial for our citizens. Together, we are building a future that is green, healthy and sustainable. Thank you. Jai Hind. Today's India is not only catering to its own societal needs but is also contributing to the world through collaborations. For instance, we provide tsunami early warnings to the other Indian Ocean Rim countries with INCOIS being a regional tsunami service provider. Ocean scientists from all over the world keep their skills up to date at ITCOCEAN at INCOIS. A Category 2 International Training Centre set up through a Memorandum of Association with UNESCO. I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all scientists, researchers and staffs working in the remote areas for the sustainable development. Ministry of Earth Sciences is providing various services like weather and climate services, deep sea technologies, scientific expeditions to Arctic, Antarctic, Southern Ocean and Himalayas, 
establishment of seismological laboratories all over the country, blue economy, marriage spatial planning, what not. As the nation is celebrating Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, India is preparing not just to become a self-reliant nation in science and technology, but to rise once again as the Vishwa Guru, the epitome of knowledge.